I'm somehow addicted to this Detroit Pistons team. Welcome back to Pistons Intellect. I'm your host, Jack Kelly. You can follow me on Twitter at Jack underscore Kelly underscore 313. And today we're going to touch on the Pistons 110-112 loss to the Houston Rockets. But wanted to open the show uh, just by talking about the title and kind of my addiction to supporting this team. I only two days ago made the statement that done making content till Cade's back or changes made, but I don't know, man. I'm I can't take my eyes off this team. And it's not because of the losing or the train wreck it is. I just I don't know, there's something in me. I regardless of the content piece of all this, I was always going to watch the games and they somehow find a way to reel me back in. And yeah, I I don't know. When I made that little statement on Twitter the other day, I was really feeling it. Like I was, I think we've all gone through this, watching this team this year where we tell ourselves, I'm done. Like I'm not watching this. Every 20 to 30 point loss within the few hours after you tell yourself, I'm done, I'm not doing this. And I've had those thoughts plenty of times, but they were, I thought they were kind of like the feelings I had after that Spurs game were the the darkest I've had as a fan. And, but anyway, we find ourselves here. I, I don't know. There's just something, there's something within me. Like I, I, I love this team and Though I've never seen any real success with the team, uh, part of me thinks that I need to, if I'm going to sit down and watch these games every day as much as I can and think about this team as much as I do, I may as well keep making some recap videos and getting my thoughts out on screen, even if they're a bit all over the place. So I guess... Part of the reason I am so addicted to this team in particular is probably similar to a lot of you, and that is because of the young talent on this team. And while we may not all be as high as on each of these players as we were on draft night in each of their particular drafts, more often than not, each game, one of these young guys or two of these young guys will make plays that just draw you back in and give you this slither of hope. And at the same time, they also make tons of costly mistakes, which drive you insane. But I don't know. It's like between Jaden Ivey, Jalen Duran, and even Asar Thompson tonight, uh, Isaiah Stewart to a lesser extent, but he's still relatively young. Yeah. I think on the whole, like that's, that for me is the thing that keeps drawing me back so much is each of these players, I truly believe they might not be all stars and stars, but I truly believe there's so much young talent here. And obviously the main question is, can it fit together? So far, it probably doesn't look like it does, but it's, that's what keeps me coming back and that's what keeps making me want to talk about this team um because i just believe there's something here and they are by far the worst team in the league the roster is poorly constructed um no no denying any of that um coaching is questionable at times but yeah i think i just want to touch on the young guys and um, the first talking point here is obviously Detroit lose a close game. And, man, I'll, I'll be truthful here. I missed pretty much the first nine minutes of the first quarter and I missed a few minutes at the start of the third quarter. But um, honestly, like the Pistons looked relatively okay offensively, but I think tonight the defense was was better. wasn't great. wasn't amazing, but it was better. 
Um, and I think that was like when you look at the box score, Isaiah Stewart was minus 10, I think. But I think just having his physical presence back alongside Jalen Duren um, just helps. Those two, they aren't amazing defensively as a duo. Like, and I believe that's some of that's because Stu, I still believe, is kind of out of position at the four defensively. You're not fully maximizing his strengths. But, um, and the other piece of that is Jalen Duran still learning to defend at the five. But I think just having those two together, they just, there's a chemistry there defensively that they look, like I said, they're not amazing, but it just gives the Pistons more presence on the interior um, for the most part. And uh, Stu had a relatively decent game offensively. He's still turning threes down, but for his first game back, um, I think to sh- to score 16 points, have seven boards, um, and shoot three of eight from three uh, is is not bad. It, it's a pretty good comeback game after being out with a, I think it was a big toe injury. So to have some form of foot injury and come back and play play like that, I think is a positive. Um, whether or not he should be the starting four in the future, I'm leaning towards no after originally being high on that, but. I think just having his presence back in the lineup clearly helped the Pistons um, tonight because although this Rockets team has struggled on the road, they're f- they are now 19 and 18 on the season. Um, and, you know, they're in a much better position than Detroit are. They're well coached. They're pretty good defensively. they got plenty of so much length and just – um, phys- like they play quite physical just alongside Fred Van Vliet, Jabari Smith, who's going to be an excellent defender. Um, they can throw in Jeff Green, who's just a big body, Cam Whitmore, another big body, not great defensively, but um, yeah. So, but back to the Pistons, I think uh, Stu played pretty well. Um, and then the other two that stood out for me immediately were Jalen Duran and Jaden Ivey. Not the biggest first half, to be honest. Um, Alec Burke's shooting in the first half was kind of a, the thing that kept them going there. He played 30 minutes on night, Alec Burks. But, man, in that fourth quarter, um, Jaden Ivey and Jalen Durant, they had numerous possessions, whether it was in pick and roll or just playing off one another. They looked really good together. Um, Ivy finishes with 18 points, seven rebounds, eight assists on – probably around 40% shooting. Um, And the big one for him has been that offensive rebounding. Ever since that um, Celtics game that went to overtime probably a couple of weeks ago now, uh, Ivy's been attacking the glass offensively. And I think you kind of see those Russ Westbrook comparisons when he's doing that, just willing himself at the ball. He's got that kind of strength and – jumping ability to get in there and wreak havoc. And, yeah, like I said, he finished with five offensive rebounds, tied for most in the game, um, most on the Pistons. And, yeah, I, I, look, I like that element of his game, especially like you can't do it every time because you got to play transition defense, and that's an area that the Pistons still struggle in. But I think here and there it's good to see the energy and effort from Jaden on that end. And he didn't even get credited for the rebound in this, but there was kind of a loose ball on the basket. Um Shengun was trying to haul in the rebound. JD kind of tapped it, and it looked like it was going to be out in the Pistons, but Jaden Ivey jumped, saved it, and sort of threw it off Jalen Green's legs, which just got the Pistons another possession. Um, and, yeah, as I said, his chemistry with Jalen Duran at times tonight was just really fun to watch. Um, those two, it's funny. they're not. I'm not going to say they're a great pick-and-roll duo, and I think partially that's to do with Jaden's kind of um, just his handles just not there yet to be kind of a good pick and roll player in my opinion. Um, I think he might be able to get there, but when Jaden does have that good pick and roll rep with Duran as the screener, um, the plays they make together look awesome. Like just from a purely like a fan point of view, like watchability, like when they connect on a lob or Jalen's dropping off a pass to. Um, or Jaden dropping a pass to JD for a dunk. Um, those two are really fun together. And um, that was a bit of a bright spot. Um, JD finishes with 15 points, eight rebounds, few assists, two steals and a block. Um, 
his matchup with Shangoon, I mean, Shangoon, he's just a flat out all star. Finished 29, 6 and 6 on like 50% shooting, or well over 50% shooting. So, look, I think that's a tough matchup for JD because Shangoon does a lot around the high post, a lot around the elbows, um, takes some crazy post fades. He's just. I think he's a tough cover for any center in the league, so I'm not going to get on JD too much. Um, but especially because overall the Rockets were held to 112 points, which is good for this Pistons team. So I think a solid game from JD um, and something to build off. He once again continues just to flash. He's got this really nice spin move out of the post um, that – he seems to be getting really comfortable with, and I love that part of his game when he can kind of use a head fake and spin out of the post and use his left hand or finish with his right hand, and he did one of those tonight over Shangoon um, and just continues to show a little bit more of the bounce. Like from what I saw, I didn't see any jumpers tonight, which I'm happy with because I just I don't think that's something – worth developing right now this season um that's just my opinion but i think solid game defensively for him but i think this brings me to my next point uh and that's the turnovers and poor decisions which continue to kill this team in any form of any game but particularly in the close games i this team's had so like that's lost number 36 They've lost seven in a row. They've lost 30, 34 out of the past 35. Like uh, a lot of these losses just merge into one for me. But one thing I'm sure of is they have had at least four to five of these exact type games where it comes down to the final minute or the Pistons are ahead with five minutes to play like they were tonight. And it comes down to the final minute and just bizarre decisions and turnovers continue to cost them. And, Tonight, the Pistons got out to a five-point lead off the back of an Alec Burks three with around five minutes to go, which, you know, that's not much of a lead at all in this day and age, especially with that much time to go. But it kind of felt like, you know, they're up by five, five minutes to go on their home floor. The crowd was the crowd was into it. And it just felt like they had some momentum Um Jaden Ivey then again, after Shengun makes two free throws, comes back down with just four and a half minutes to play and dunks all over Shengun. And that was another moment we thought, right, I have pretty much zero confidence in this team, but I'm thinking, right, okay, don't like that's going to, re- that could be the moment that kind of sparks his team, like dunking on Shengun. But then Shengun comes straight back down, another two points. Jaden and Jalen hook up for a really cool assist on a huge, dunk where Jalen put it behind his head on a two-handed jam. Another one of those moments you think, okay, these are just the type of moments that I feel like you get in a win. Like I, I just, I, it was around that time I tweeted out that like Jalen and Jalen make me feel things like I have an addiction to this team because I was fully not planning on doing any content or just tweeting or anything about this team, but they just reeled me back in and I was thinking, okay, they're going to win. It's safe for me to get excited, but no. It doesn't. Fred Van Vliet makes a floater, draws a foul, then comes back down a few possessions later and nails a three to put the Rockets up 108-107 with a minute 40 to go. And honestly, that was the moment there. The second they got down by one point, I just you have the sinking feeling because you know the second they are down in the game, especially with this amount of time to go, they, the demons, like, if we're feeling it as fans that they can't close games, I would be utterly shocked if the players don't feel that, you know, lack of confidence to close games because they've so many times faltered. And sure enough, coming out of the next possession following that Van Vliet, Van Vliet three, uh, Jaden Ivey looks to make something off the bounce and dribbles it off his foot, and immediately it goes straight to the Rockets. They bring it back down the floor, and then what do you know? Another pull-up jumper from Fred Van Vliet, a guy that a lot of people mocked in the off-season 
mock the Rockets for spending all their spending a fair portion of their cap space on Fred Van Vliet, um, a veteran point guard. But what do you know? Veterans who can do stuff on a consistent basis help you win games. And Fred Van Vliet hit two huge buckets. I believe he scored 12 points in the last quarter. And yeah, next possession down. Uh, Stu turns it over once again. Rockets have the ball up 110, 107 with a minute to play. Shangun gets a wide open dunk. And that's when the sell the, ch- sell the team chance started sort of coming out again. Um, Stu kind of made up for it, hits a catch and shoot three down the other end. But yeah, the Pistons get one final chance and Jaden Ivey pulls up from three. It was a pretty gross shot in the sense of it came off the glass, but that thing was halfway down, rolls out. And for a split second, Jalen Duran has his hand on the ball and you think he's putting that back in, but just can't control it and the Pistons lose. And, yeah, after just going through all that again, I actually feel quite quite sad. (laughs) But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the one the one positive to take from this and one major question I have going forward is how much did, did Boyan Bogdanovich's absence and the, the around 30 minutes he plays a night play into the Pistons holding the Rockets to 112? And how much of that was just maybe the Rockets not being a good road team and kind of, you know, having an off night potentially? Because... Yeah, I mean, Kevin Knox isn't a great defender, but he shot the ball really well tonight. He's tall. He's definitely not as bad as Boyan defensively, but I still think Boyan starts no matter what. I think maybe more of the defensive. I think it's potentially less about Boyan being out and more about Stu being back at the four just to help on the glass, to help be, have that bigger body, bigger presence in there alongside JD. So, look, I think... Feels like Killian's going to continue to start tonight. He goes two of six. Has the eight assists once again. But, like, I really don't want to sound like I'm bashing Killian, but it just – the sh- those assists for some reason just don't hit the same as a normal eight assist game. Because I just – when I watch him in pick and roll and that kind of thing, he does not look at the rim. And half the time he'll dribble it in, get to the elbow and then like dribble back out or he might get into like the center of the key, but he's not even looking at the rim and it just, I don't want to discredit his passing because he's a, he's a fine passer for sure. But I don't know. I don't know. I've said I'd like to see a SAR starting at the two. Maybe you can't do that now though with Stu back at the four, but hmm. One, another big positive, honestly, was seeing Marvin Bagley back on the floor and he goes four of six, four rebounds in 12 minutes, 11 points, a steal. And I think you can immediately tell that he's the offensive punch he brings and just his ability to grab a defensive rebound. I'm sorry, it just completely, it like there is no way James Wiseman ever should have been playing minutes over a healthy Marvin Bagley. And the fact Bagley's back in the lineup now shows that the Pistons and Monty Williams truly were benching him in favor of James Wiseman. And that is, I'm like I said in my last video, I am not shocked that that was the case because his team continues to surprise me with their rotations at times. But yeah, I don't even know. I can't even like, I'm, I'm out of anger, to be honest. It's really frustrating because I just think I just don't know why I've been playing Marvin Bagley I think the Pistons bench tonight at one stage had outscored the Rockets like 19 to 0 and Alec Burks and Marvin Bagley were the two doing that damage and it's just like you've just been sitting on the bench like 10 to 15 points a night in Marvin Bagley an efficient 10 to 15 points guy that can rebound like he's going to give you that production Every time, if he gets enough minutes, like he just—he's just a good scorer, I believe, off the bench. He's like 
if he was if he wasn't like a center where your defense is arguably the most important aspect of your game uh, for a player like Bagley like if he was a small forward and gave you that kind of production like that's a seriously valuable player but unfortunately positionally in his defensive limitations it's, it's tough but he needs to stay in this lineup like I don't understand he needs to be in there over Wiseman we even saw some Stu at the five minutes tonight which is good to see because I think that's where Stu ultimately needs to end up for this team at least um so yeah guys I don't know. I don't have a whole lot more on this game. Um, kind of just another one of those frustrating games. And yeah, I think I feel a bit better tonight than I did the other night, but who knows? The Pistons play the Wizards next. So I'm not sure if that game's at LCA. Let me just check. Uh, because if it's not at LCA, the Pistons, there's less than zero percent chance they win so okay the game's at dc so i have a feeling following that game we will be back here in dire straits similar to the spurs game because i just every time the pistons go to washington they get beaten by 20 points whether they're healthy or not they just get beaten by 20 so sorry to end on that depressing note but i think there was some positives tonight uh DeJounte Murray, I am I might do a trade video once we get a few more rumours together uh, instead of just discussing it here. But, yeah, I don't think DeJounte Murray is the guy. I will say that. But it's something I'm willing to discuss and kind of go through because Ivy looked decent tonight. But, um yeah, I'm, I still think you keep Ivy. I just think there's a discussion there. I don't think it's 100% set in stone that Jaden Ivy and Kate Cunningham, you absolutely need to keep them together. Like, I think having a discussion, I don't think even DeJounte is the best guy to put next to Kate, but it's just worth a discussion. And it is good to see the Pistons are kind of linked and in those talks. I will say that. So, um, anyway, that's going to do it. Let me know your thoughts below. Uh, Hey, feeling, do you guys get that feeling of being like addicted to this team where you just, whether for whatever reason it is, whether you just want to see this team lose to put more pressure on the franchise or you just, you can't help but watch because you just love basketball and unfortunately you're a dedicated Pistons fan. You love, or you love watching the young guys. Just let me know if anyone else has that feeling because, yeah, I've got it. I'm happy to say I'm addicted to the team, as sad as that sounds. But until after the Wizards game, uh, which I'll be back for to do a recap, as always, uh, if you hit that subscribe button and if you felt even more kinder, the like button, that'd be great. But yeah, until the Wizards game, go Pistons. Mm -hmm.